Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Uh, this will be a rather short video in which we will just start to set up our music service. So as I said, we will handle all the logic, all the music playing logic in a background service, or actually a foreground service, but that will run in the background. So that we can just um, also minimize our app, um, turn off the screen and our music will keep playing. And since that will be a foreground service, that also must come with a notification which is exactly what we want in our app here. So we want to have that music player notification in which we can uh, pause and resume our song, in which we can navigate to the next song where we have that seek bar and all that cool stuff. And we will actually also worry about this service and all of the stuff that belongs to that for quite a lot of parts. So that could easily be for six, seven or eight parts where we just have to implement stuff in that service and we cannot really try out our app before that. So that will really take a little bit of time until we can, um, until we are at the state where we can play songs. But yeah, I will explain everything and it shouldn't be too difficult. So let's actually jump right into it and create a new package in our root package here, which will be called exoplayer. And in that package, we will just put all the stuff that has something to do with our service or with our um, music playing stuff. So I will create a new Kotlin file class and that will be our music service. And that will be a class. This will not inherit from service, which would just be the normal way to do it. Instead, there is a special service for this kind of media stuff, which is called media browser service compat, which is a very long word. But that is actually the kind of service that we want to use here. And we can also just use that as a foreground service. So why is this actually called media browser service compat? Well, you can see we need to implement some functions here. Let's press control and I and implement those two functions on get root and on load children. Those have to be implemented in this service. And now this is called media browser service because we have a function here on load children. So usually when you consider a music app like Spotify, for example, then this is not just a plain music app like we do it here that just displays a list of songs. Instead, you can rather browse through the app. So you have playlists, you have albums. So all that stuff you can click on and then a list of music will open. Or even if you click on an album, then other albums will open up that are just related to that. And you can basically think of this music app as kind of a file manager. So in a file manager, you can navigate through folders and you also have some files there. And in our example here, the files would actually be the actual songs that we can play. And the folders would just be something like an album, like a playlist or like a recommender section or whatever. And this media browser service compat here, and that just allows us to kind of easily implement that. Well, it's, it's not <laughs> really easy, but it comes with a lot of tools that helps us with that. So it would definitely be much harder to implement that without this media browser service compat. And in this onload children function, you can see we have that parent ID. That is basically just an ID we can call to get a list of songs. So we could just call the root ID, which will just give the default songs. Then we could have an ID for a specific playlist that would just return the, the songs in the playlist and so on. So we will just have a single ID here in our app. But if you want to really make such a browsable music player app, then you need to put more stuff into this onload children function. But for now, we will actually leave both of these functions empty and worry about that in a later part. So we actually first want to start to inject the dependencies we declared in our service module in the last video. And for that, we need to annotate this service class with add Android entry point because that is an Android component. And then we always need that annotation if we want to inject something into this class with dagger hilt. And on the one hand, we want to inject our data source factory. So we use this at inject annotation and just specify this late init variable data source factory, which is of type default data source factory. 
And then dagger hilt will automatically recognize that we want to inject a variable here or an object of type default data source factory. It will take a look in our service module and it will see, oh, okay, we have such an object here of that type. And then it, it knows that it should inject this object here into our music service here. And we will do the same with our exoplayer instance. So add inject late init var exoplayer, which is of type simple exoplayer here. Okay, what other stuff do we need here? I want to declare a coroutine scope specific to the service so that we can just use coroutines in the service. That is always something you should do if you just use plain services here like we do, because a service is not asynchronous by default, as many people think because it still runs on the main thread. And when we want to use our music source later on, so from Firebase to fetch those songs, we want to do that not on the main thread because that would block the UI in our app. And for that, we will have a crew scope here that we just limit to the lifetime of our service, which will first of all, we be a crew job. So private val service job, and we set that equal to a new job and also import that pressing alt plus enter and we specify a new private val here for our service scope so that will be the scope in which we launch the coroutines and the service scope will just deal with the cancellation of the coroutines so that defines the lifetime of our coroutines that we launch inside of the service and we'll just make sure that when the service dies that also the coroutines in it that are still running that those will be cancelled and not lead to memory leaks. So that service scope will be equal to a coroutine scope. And in here we pass dispatchers.main plus our service job. So what this plus operator here means in terms of coroutine context, that just means that it will kind of merge these two together. So the coroutine scope that we define here has the properties of our main dispatcher and service job together. And that will just allow us to define such a custom service scope here. Okay, what else do we need? We want to define a so-called media session because if we play music here with that media browser service compat, then we always have this media session. So basically the current session of playing music and that contains really important information about the media session. And we can later use that to communicate with the service. So we will define a private late init var here called media session. And that will be of type media session. Um, actually, media session compat here. So that is the newer version of that. And we also want to define a private late init var media session connector. So that will be a class that is used to connect to this media session. And that will be of type media session connector, this one here. Okay, that's it for now for declaring these variables. Now you want to initialize all these in our on create function of this service. So what we want to do here is first of all, we want to get the activity intent for our notification. So when we click on our notification, then we want to open our activity and we can create this intent by writing val activity intent that will be a panning intent. And we can get that by using our package manager. Make that null check dot get launch intent for package. And here we can simply pass our package name and this will just give us a normal intent that just leads to our activity. And we can use dot or actually make a null check here a dot let afterwards and construct a pending intent here. So pending intent dot get activity for the context. We can simply pass this since we're inside of a service. We can simply pass zero for the request code. We're not going to need this for the intent. We are going to use it because that is the intent we just created and we don't want to pass any flex. So we pass zero for that as well. Uh, then next, we want to initialize our media session by writing media session is equal to new media session compat, which will take the context. So we pass this, it will take the tag of our service for so we can just define a tag here service underscore tag. 
Um, scroll up, create a constant here, const val. Actually, that can be a private const val. Service tag, and we give it the name music service. Then you scroll down again, call that apply on that. And here we want to set the session activity. You can see that it takes a pending intent. We want to set that to our activity intent that we just created. And we also want to set the session, this media session to active. So is active is equal to true. And such a media session now comes with a so-called session token. So that is basically just a token that we can use to get information about this media session. And since we are inside of this a media browser service compat here, we also have the properties of that class, of course. And that class also has the property media session token or something like that, just session token, I think. And we need to assign the token of our just created media session to our service. So we will use, um, I think it's just, yeah, session token. And we set that to equal to media session dot session token. And then only our media session connector is missing. So we also want to initialize that media session connector is equal to a new media session connector that just takes our media session. So we pass that here and then we can use that connector to set its player. So set player to our exo player. So we don't need to define or create this exo player here because we injected it above here. So Dagger Hilt will actually worry about that. We created that exo player here in our service module, actually here, and that instance will be injected into our music service. Now, the last thing I want to do in this video is to make sure that all of our coroutines launched in the service scope are canceled when the service dies. So we will override on destroy here. And in this on destroy function, we're just going to call service scope dot cancel. And that is already it for this video. I hope this media stuff got clear to you. If not, then this is really not a problem. We will deal with so much media stuff in this playlist so that you will definitely understand how all this works together after watching this course. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and comment below what you think about that. And if you're not a subscriber of my channel yet, hit the subscribe button and not miss regular Android content every second day. Have an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.